So, hello and a very warm welcome from Fronius International. My name is Chrissy. I'm from Team Trainings and Education of the Solar Energy Department at Fronius International. And yeah, welcome to our webinar today. Uh, we are going to talk about the Solar Creator and specifically about an update that we got on this tool with the integration of the previous tool. You might know it with the word Fronius Solar Configurator. So this was the previous tool for the design of our systems. And this is now integrated into our new Fronius Creator tool. And I want to show you how this looks like and what you can do with that. Yeah, so um, we have today a live presentation, so no slides. And I want to show you directly in a live uh, view what to do and how to do that with the new tool integration. And every time during this presentation and also at the end, if you have any questions, please make use of the chat function. You can find that on the right side of your screen uh, and send in your questions. So if you have any or any feedback, you know uh, what I mean, you can send this through. And also the product manager, Thomas Hinterplattner, for this tool for the solar creator he's online and in the chat with me and he will try to answer as quick and as, uh, um, as good as possible and also at the end we will take a few minutes time to answer live your questions then okay so without further ado let's get started um, you can see in the screen already that i have logged into the solar creator so it's very easy to find. You just type in creator.fronius.com and then you log in with your Fronius credentials. So it's the same stuff you type in when you log into Solar Web, for example. And yeah, then you come to this page. It looks exactly like that with a list of all your projects. So if you are new, this list will be empty, of course. And then you have two possibilities how to use this tool. First of all, you can use the Start New Project button for the detailed information. So here you can do a detailed this system design with a seven step process and you can find out exactly what components, what products fits best for the solution for the customer. And then you have a final report which you can send to the customer or which you can also print out and use in a sales conversation. Today, however, we want to take a closer look into the second option which you can find on the, uh, find on the right side of your screen. And this is called Check PV Design. So this is now a link to a quick design mode. And this uh, was previously called Fronius Solar Configurator. So I now click on this button and it directly transfers me to this new tool. And here I also want to mention that if you have uh, linked uh, the Fronius Solar Configurator in your browser, so if you have bookmarked it, don't worry. If you uh, still want to keep this bookmark, it's fine. If you now search for Solar Configurator, you will be automatically be forwarded to Solar Creator, or at least in the next few days, this will happen. So you don't have to change the bookmark. This will stay the same. We will just link it internally so that you will come to the right tool. Also, I want to mention the previous tool, the Solar Configurator. It will run out, of course, because it's integrated now. So we will keep it up the next few days. So end of next week, probably we will end this. And then all the search, the Google searches for the Solar Configurator will be automatically linked to the creator if you have bookmarked the, the previous tool. Yeah, so that up front. Now, if we take a closer look, we can see it's basically a three step process how to find out what module I want to use for which uh, inverter and if this is the correct string design. Um, and the three sections are called PV module, inverter and general. So PV module, it goes without saying, here I search from a, a manufacturer of modules I want to use. So if we say we are, we're based in Austria, so I have to use the Kyoto photovoltaics module, of course. If I search for this manufacturer, it also gives me all the modules. And I can, for example, say I want to use a 300 watt peak module, a perk module, for example. And um, also a hint there, if you can't find the module, um, you can also add a new data uh, a base. So basically, 
with this plus symbol here, you can enter a new module, for example, with the voltage and amperage and so on. And you can then, so if I click here, for example, um, you can change some data and then use a different module. Or what you can also do is, uh, sorry, this is the, the other one. You can also send an email to pvdatabase at pvscout.de. They are uh, working our database basically. And if you send your module that you want to have in there to them, they will insert it so that we have it on our database. This is also another step how you can enter a new module. Okay, so one step done, we have entered the manufacturer and the module. Now we can uh, go to the, the to the second topic, the inverter. For example, I type in here, I'm based in Austria and I want to work with an, let's say, Simo Gen 24 10 kilowatt plus inverter. Of course, I want to use the new one in my case. And if I just leave it with that module and inverter, I can scroll down and search for all the possibilities I have with, with the string design. Um, that's one way to do it. If I basically have a free field, I, I'm not limited to any, any roof design. I just want to know, okay, what's the maximum, what's the minimum string length? I can enter the module, the inverter, and then it gives me the full compatibilities. So you can see here, the first number that pops up in, in thick black uh, writing is the number of modules. So 27, uh, uh, 27 modules, for example, gives me an inverter ratio of 81%. This is what I have set here in standard, 80 and 120% over the mentioning. And I can click here to the right and to the far right, for example, 40 module uh, would equal in 120% over dimensioning. I can also over dimension to 150%. I hope you know that already. This is a standard for all the Fronius products. And with 150%, for example, it gives me 50 modules in total, which equals 15 kilowatt peak. This is the maximum we can do with our product uh, without any warranty harm. So um, with these 50 modules, I can know, okay, what kilowatt peak this equals, what's the overdimensioning ratio, the inverter ratio, 150%. And further down below in that slide, we also see the self-consumption rate and the own consumption level. And those two values are based on the third column that it's over here, which is called general. So in the general data, I can leave a project name, for example, and then there is a, um, uh, for example, I can enter if I want to have a battery storage or not. So in my case, I say I'm just interested for now in the inverter and the PV system itself without the battery, but I already know my annual power consumption, which equals roughly 4,000 kilowatt hours per year. And with that value and the load profile, which I can set to employed or family, so is somebody at home during the day or not, or is he at work? And with that load profile and that annual consumption, it gives me a self-consumption ratio and an own consumption level. This is a rough number. Of course, you have to think about that. It's just an estimation, but it gives me already a rough number, which I can already tell to the customer. So to say with a, hundred and, uh, with a 15 kilowatt peak system, you have these values and with only 40, uh, modules on the roof, for example, I go to that value very quickly. We have 12 kilowatt peak and uh, also the same level because of course the output level of the inverter is the same. But if we go, on, if we go down further below to, I don't know, 8.7 kilowatt peak, we have a little different values, 35 and 16%, for example. So those two values are based on the general data on the far right side. Yeah, um, one thing that I left out, I also want to quickly mention, is the module temperature. Module temperature is set as standard to minus 10 and 70 degrees. Uh, you can change this value if you want. You can set, for example, yeah, you can just type in any different value if you already know, okay, my minimum temperature is minus 12, for example. And 
this setting is very important because of course if you remember uh, temperature is very um, is directly linked to the voltage level so if we have a low temperature the voltage level rises and therefore we also need to know it for the string design of our system if we have a too long string and the temperature drops too low it means we go in the worst case scenario over 1000 volts on the input of the inverter and we would destroy the inverter so here i can make sure that i don't do that uh, and what you can also do is you can click on this uh, you can click on this little symbol here and say okay my mini my minimum temperature at the location is this my maximum temperature is this and it also gives you the possibility to enter the gap in centimeters between the roof and the module backside so to say a ventilation level and you can set the values in here as well and it gives you a different uh, calculation based on those values you set here so this is also an option how to use it so i want to leave it as standard with minus 10 in my case and uh, yeah further down below we can also read add power gain or for a bifacial rear side of course i don't use the module right now but if i use a module which is capable of using it by facial i would be able to enter here the power gain for that yeah we leave that out in our case and if we go back to our system and we say okay 150 percent this is fine for me this is this is what i want uh, then i can go further down below and below the uh, self-consumption rate and the own consumption level the next slide is also the recommended battery size. Recommended battery size is also calculated with inverter size uh, and or uh, PV system size and also the own consumption level. And it searches for a perfect middle way there. And in this case, for example, it, it recommends me a 7.68 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, which would equal in a self-sufficiency self rate of 71% and the own consumption level of 19%. So this is just a recommendation. You can use whatever you want here. This is basically on the, on the top side here. So if I say I want the storage, then you can see here the full compatibility list, also with multiple battery towers. You know, we can do that. And for example, if I chose here the biggest one let's say the 22 kilowatt hour battery and i select it here it also gives me the calculation and tells me okay the self self sufficiency level would rise to 75% the own consumption level to 20% if i use the 22 kilowatt hour battery compared to the recommendation of the program so this is also something you can use in a customer conversation uh, sales conversations for example yeah, and further down below, below that uh, the, the first three topics here, we have a full compatibility, compatibility list of the string configuration. So as you can see, I can scroll down. It's seamless. Uh, it seems like it's endless, but it's not. But it gives me all the options how I can connect the strings together and how many modules, how many uh, strings in parallel and so on. And the first thing that pops up in the row is typically the most recommended from the program so in my case uh, it recommends me to do two strings of 17 modules on mpp tracker 1 pv1 it's called here and one string of 16 modules and mpp tracker 2. this is the recommendation for uh, the 50 modules in total or i can use 2 times 18 and 1 times 14 and so on and so on so it gives me different options and if i'm happy with that I can also click on that and it gives me a detailed string design. So it gives me uh, the voltage level, the MPP voltage at 17 degrees, at minus 10 degrees. This is again the link to the temperatures that we have set. And I can see at one glimpse if this is okay or not, because at minus 10, for example, we rise the voltage to 703 volts, which is perfectly fine. We just need to uh, figure a way to get below 1000 volts and the program will directly tell me if i'm over that yeah it also gives me mpp voltage short circuit current and so on and so on for both mpp trackers pv1 pv2 
and a few general data with the inverter ratio, for example, with 150%. If I want a, uh, a detailed overview like this, also for a sales conversation, as we have spoken about, I can also click on create report and uh, yeah, I can enter here company name, the email address and so on and so on and customer data and I can save this already so that it's linked on the, uh, the PDF file that I want to print out. So this is also one thing or one way how to do that. Okay, um, what else uh, to show? This is the most important things, I guess. Please always remember, um, it should be the first step in every system design. If you're new with Fronius, it should be the first step, uh, of course, but also if you are using uh, Fronius uh, since since uh, a few years, for example, and now you're using a new product, the new Gen24 line or the new Taro inverter, please make sure to give this one a try at the first system design, because then you can figure out, okay, what's the typical string length that I can connect, how many modules with this module type, and so that you are correct. Because if you do it with this tool and you get a Fronius check, um, that's basically it, you get a Fronius check that this system configuration is fine, then you can go on with the installation with the customer talks. Yeah, um, if we want to do now a further design, uh, a, a more detailed design, you can also go back to the solo creator with a link on here or also up to the right hand side you can also go back to the to the basic overview and we are back in this screen now and then we would be able to enter a new project we would be able to do a seven step process where we can get detailed information about the yield forecast for a whole year um, different components can be integrated like own pilot what pilot and so on but there is another webinar for that uh, it would exceed the time for this webinar that we have planned so if you are interested, check out our YouTube channel where we also talk about the Solar Creator and the, the basic feature of that tool. And yeah, we are finally finished for now with our webinar. And yeah, now I want to take a closer look into the comment section or the question section. Let's see if there was any question. Not so far. So I will leave on the microphone and and the the camera for a bit and uh, maybe there is some question popping up you can send them right through i will try to answer them and also my colleague thomas and yeah if not i want to thank you very much for the uh, attendance of this webinar i hope it was interesting you can find the recording of this webinar also in the next few days in your emails we will send it out and also you will probably find this on youtube in a few uh, uh, days as well, so you can rewatch it as many times as you want, and also make sure to check it out on your own. Uh, I think it's a quite good tool um, to get the system design right. And yeah, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Thomas, for joining me today for the question section. And yeah, uh, stay healthy, guys, and we see each other in the next webinar. Goodbye. <laughs>